Hello and welcome to another new episode of Leading with Women by Egomog. Joining us today is Apurva Bapna. She is the first Chief Cultural Officer at WPP at the country level. She has worked with talent for close to 17 years, along with being an expert in driving business results, talent development, change management, cultural integration and business partnership. She is also responsible for sustainability initiatives at WPP India. A passionate advocate for equal opportunities for women at work, she drives multiple initiatives to create a culture which celebrates inclusion and diversity. Hello, Apurva. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Rai. Thank you for inviting me to the session. So, Apurva, the position of a chief cultural officer is actually quite a new phenomenon in the Indian work culture. So according to you, how do modern leaders think about culture building in terms of a dedicated function or SOP? Uh, yeah, so it is, a, it is a new role and in fact, it's interesting you ask me that question because when I took on the role of uh, the Chief Culture Officer for WPP, I had not heard of anybody having that uh, a title or a year back. Uh, but yes, I think the role is pretty relevant and uh, and has an important role to play because uh, as we all know that culture is not made uh, uh, in a day or a month or a year, you know, sometimes organizations take a really, really long time for cultures to evolve, develop uh, and, you know, make it an integral part of the organization. And culture is also pretty much what attracts the new people who want to join our organization and it's also what people who quit the organization remember the place for. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, it, and it definitely not, is not a singular responsibility. I mean, it's not the job of the chief culture officer, therefore, to uh, develop the culture of an organization. But I think, uh, you know, when organizations are large and um, you know, they're diverse, it can lead to creation of silos, uh, not giving people enough opportunity to work together, uh, you know, to collaborate uh, and truly sort of thrive in the diversity that the organization has to offer. And I think the role of, therefore, uh, Chief Culture Officer potentially is to really help uh, people come together, help thrive in that, uh, you know, uh, in that uh, diversity, create more and more opportunities for people to come together and, you know, create magic as we like to call it, and thereby uh, truly create a more inclusive uh, workplace. So to me, that's really what the role of a, a Chief Culture Officer could be for an organization in today's world. But in this new world where we are increasingly seeing work happening remotely, where we are seeing this hybridization of work, how are you still working that magic? How has it impacted your thinking and playbook on organizational culture? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, March 2020 with the advent of this uh, pandemic, I think uh, everything's gone through a rethink and a, and a, and a re restart and literally a reboot. And, uh, we are no sort of unique to that situation as an organization. And we have, uh, you know, in, in, during this last one, one and a half years, uh, I think we've had to relook at our policies and processes in a big way to say that, how do we really embrace uh, this new world order, if I may say so. And, uh, you know, the entire employee life cycle, for example, in the erstwhile uh, pre-pandemic area was all about physical, you know, it, it, it involved people meeting, uh, talking uh, and you know there's a lot of physical sort of interaction uh, to that whole employee experience uh, but today everything is actually moved uh, to virtual. Uh, I will confess that initial few days were tough because people were not used to working remotely so starting from the whole infrastructure setup in terms of you know uh, making IT services available, making uh, ensuring that Wi-Fi works uh, smoothly and in our kind of business for example a lot of work happens in the studios you know, so the studios had to be moved uh, literally overnight to people's homes so that work didn't stop. Uh, so all that is really where uh, the whole remotification sort of happened in, in real. Uh, we've also, a lot of people processes also went through change. For example, learning and development was for us always classroom sessions, workshops, uh, trainings where people come together, brainstorm, think. But now, of course, it's all moved into a virtual world and it's it's running pretty successfully, I, I can say that with, with confidence. So, what is your take on mentorship and coaching? And how do you consider that as critical in WBP India being its most diverse and inclusive self? Uh, a 
again interesting question and the subject which i am personally and professionally very passionate about and and an area of uh, great focus for us as, as an organization uh, and you know I, i mean it's it's no rocket science that diversity and inclusion is becoming one of the most uh, you know hot topics for conversation and uh, you know where organizations are taking lead in terms of uh, what they how they want to be seen as an organization when it comes to being inclusive and and uh, uh, diverse right and i think it also comes at the back of all that's happened around us in the last one year you know whether it was what happened with the whole black lives matter movement in 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 america we've had a recent uh, uh, you know this whole asian community being attacked in in the western world and so on and so forth has all put pressure back on us to say that you know how do you bring in more uh, diversity and how do you become more inclusive as a as a company as a society uh, you know as a, as a group of people that we are and my organization is obviously uh, very focused on making this mainstream and integral uh, both at a global level and also locally in in india and i think as a country there is scope to do much better when it comes to for example gender representation you know i mean i will look at india we have a, we almost have 50% of uh, i mean we have a equal gender ratio right so this 50% of men and 50 50% of uh, women but when it comes to the representation of women in the workforce the numbers don't really match i mean rural has for example only 20% of women being represented in the labor workforce and that number has also come significantly down because of the pandemic similarly if you want to look at the urban sector i mean this almost about just 9% of women who hold senior leadership positions in the corporate world uh, in, in the urban area so there is a lot of scope to get better and my organization also therefore needs to work on that uh, number to become truly uh, sort of uh, you know 50% and therefore we launched this program which is called stella which is like a mentoring initiative uh, you know uh, at wpp and of course this program exists uh, outside of india and it was actually first launched in uk but uh, the it's a slightly different avatar in, in india when we launched it because uh, generally it's run with very smaller group of uh, women it it's more like a, a lead group of women who come together to discuss issues and challenges and and you know all of that but we wanted to make this program more inclusive we got about 150 women from all of wpp india to become a part of the program and what we've done is we've got you know a part of this group is uh, senior women from from wpp who actually become mentors and then there's a there's about 100 women from here who become who are the mid level high potential uh, women who become the mentees and they go through this one year journey where uh, you know they are mentored uh, by by this uh, by the senior women who's 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 able to share experiences uh, you know talk about the learnings and also sort of inspire these young women to think about their careers and about their about the choices that they want to make uh, as they as they progress right so apart from leveraging mentorship and guides for stella there are other initiatives like the hashtag unstudied alliance which the wpp is a founding member of so how relevant is this movement today and how is it especially trying to be catalyst in the indian context yeah uh, so you know uh, to the like the early initiative was more inward focus and it was more for women within our own organization uh, this alliance that we become a part of uh, recently uh, is actually managed by un women which is the united nations women and uh, this alliance actually runs in different parts of the of the country uh, sorry different parts of the world and in india it got launched uh, just around uh, the women you know international women's day actually and uh, essentially the alliance is focused on uh, working towards progressive portrayal of uh, women in the world of advertising and communications that's really where it where it all started right and uh, and also how do you break these stereotypes that that exist in the world of advertising and and communications uh, you know case in point being that uh, if you look at if you look at some of the advertising that we see today uh, you will never have a woman doing an ad of a uh, auto client in most cases i i i I'm, i'm generalizing there could be you know one in uh, one 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 off you know where you have uh, women uh, doing a car ad or a tractor ad or a engine oil ad for example but very rare uh, or similarly you know whenever it comes to doing like a washing machine ad you have mostly the mothers coming in and you know playing that role of, of you know you know uh, the model in the ad so there is obviously this uh, unknowing sort of regressive portrayal that happens uh, for women so we really want to work towards seeing that you know how do we break that and how do we make 
uh, you know, uh, this whole hotel more progressive and, and you know, where you can see men and women cut across doing all kinds of uh, advertising. And I think what we've also realized that it's not just restricted to advertising, Rahi, but we really want to focus also on the all forms of content, uh, you know, uh, what you see on OTT, for example, today, or what you see on television, or what you see in cinema. Uh, there is this, you always see some sort of stereotypes that exist. And how do you sort of break those uh, uh, stereotypes? And uh, I know the coalition got uh, sort of different types of organizations that have come together from uh, you know from Unilever on one extreme who's, who's completely sort of focused on this sort of uh, war uh, to Diageo uh, you know uh, again interesting client uh, in this space to work on right we've got uh, advertising organizations and bodies who are part of who are like really decision making bodies and then we've got uh, other agency uh, networks are part of this. So there is this whole sort of interesting group of people who have the power to bring in change. So we all come together collectively. It's a new initiative. It's just started. So we are very, we are very hopeful and looking forward, uh, you know, to see that uh, how can we actually bring uh, the change that we'd like to see when it comes to creating a more uh, gender equal uh, world when it comes to advertising, communications and content specifically. So now moving away from your role in WB India and moving away from the role of WB India in the Indian context, what about you? What have been some key turning points or milestones in your life which have made you the woman you are today? Ah, okay, interesting. Always hard to answer a question that's personal in nature, but uh, but yeah, I mean, firstly, I think to begin with, I come from a very progressive Jain family, and I say Jain family because Jains are considered to be slightly sort of more business focused and slightly uh, still uh, not as progressive as some of the other uh, people, right? I mean, uh, so I come from a pretty progressive family which was focused a lot on education and uh, you know we were given freedom and responsibility in equal measure at a very early age uh, and I have a brother who's five years old too but uh, honestly at home I've never felt that I was the girl and he was the guy in the house so I mean uh, I'm grateful to have parents who really brought us with such uh, sense of equality and then uh, and then two more things that really helped you know shape the person that I am I think uh, I was a big sort of follower of the Art of Living Foundation and I started following them in the in the year 1999 uh, which was the year I was graduating and uh, you know till then I did not know what was spirituality and you know what was this whole thing around meditation and being good and helping people and all that right I mean and again uh, life changing experience because when I joined Art of Living uh, and you know I became a teacher in fact uh, in a span of two years and I started taking courses you know these uh, I started taking meditation courses actually for for juvenile homes you know where you used to have children living in correction centers who had done something wrong in life and wanted to become better people and I think that was you know that taught me so much of compassion empathy and you know this constant desire to contribute to the larger good in whichever way uh, that I could, and then of course you know with all this aside, uh, motherhood. I think being a mother was uh, was one of the greatest things because I think it taught me so many things as a as a person. You know this whole thing about unconditional love, uh, patience, uh, being tolerant. Uh, uh, you know not feeling uh, you. You didn't have the choice of being tired when you're a mother, right? So it taught me so many things that I would I did not realize till I became a mother, and I think I've, I found new new I had this newfound respect for my mother too because I just started respecting her so much more after seeing all this, and also for me motherhood was a, was also uh, was a turning point because I think it really helped me manage learn it, you know that was the time when I started learning to understand the importance of uh, of having a career. And also having a personal and a, and a family life because all this time I think uh, you know I was just focused on, on I was very lenient in my focus for example I would just focus on career I would just focus on family but having a daughter completely changed uh, uh, that for me and I always tell my daughter that you know my career took off after she came into my life uh, you know all this time I think I was happy complacent but uh, with with daughter coming into my life, it, it changed for good, and I continue to feel extremely happy and, and satisfied with where I am in my life currently. 
uh, when my daughter was born and I had to come back to work after four months of maternity uh, break uh, and I was a single mom then I moved from Jaipur which was which is where my daughter was born back to Delhi where workplace was and I realized uh, you know in within a week's time that I had no support system in place you know my mom had to come back to Jaipur because she had her life there uh, I had no mate uh, at that point in time I was living alone in a flat with my daughter with some part-time or help uh, coming in and and within a week you know I decided to come back home to Jaipur because I mean I couldn't I there was no way that I could have left my daughter just like that and she was too young to be put in a child care or whatever which many people suggested to me at that time so uh, so I remember making that call to my boss and I had a I had a really lovely woman boss at that point uh, who herself was a mother of three kids you know so I called her I told her I said you know uh, personal life and uh, and professional life is at crossroads and you know I've made the decision to you know focus on my personal life and she immediately responded saying do not take any decision in haste uh, uh, let me come back and we will sort this out because she was outside the country at that point in time so I said okay fine a week later she came we spoke on the phone and she said you're not doing any stupid thing of resigning from your job and sitting at home trying to be this good mother because you will never be a good mother if you think that you can be at home uh, and just focus on your daughter 24 by 7. she also knew that i I, that you know I am a very ambitious person I mean I was ambitious then and I continue to be ambitious and she said you'll do complete injustice to yourself and to your daughter so take some more time off figure your support system you know get your mate get whatever you need to get in place uh, to be able to come back to work but do come back to work and we will wait for you now of course this is one-off cases right it, it's not something that happens across for everyone I was lucky things worked out I came back to work after eight months of uh, being on, on, on a break and and here I am today I mean the fact that uh, you know I've done well in life I've got a, I've, I've had a great sort of career run in the last uh, 10 years and, and I'm, I'm genuinely sort of uh, you know blessed that I've had the experiences that I've had but this is not normal right so from an organization perspective if I want to see some of the things for example you know and it all again because of pandemics, all these things happened, right? Naturally, it happened. Like, for example, having flexibility, uh, you know, having work, having working from home as a policy in, in workplace. Not many organizations had a work from work from home policy till uh, till the lockdown happened. Uh, and you know, giving giving women a sense of security when they when they go on this maternity break to say that you will be, you will come back, you will be welcomed. Uh, you know, uh, you will not be treated unfairly because you went on this uh, uh, break, right? Uh, some of those things, if we can just call out and actually demonstrate that in our action and behavior, uh, is is com is something that's probably uh, the need. And I think many organizations are working towards that. But I, I just feel that there is a lot still that needs to be done in many other uh, other workplaces. And and the last thing that I want to say that you know. Uh, we should not think ourselves. We should not think of ourselves as super women. I mean, it's okay for us to say no to things that we can't do, and it's important to ask for help. You know, it's the most important thing. Asking for help at the right time to be able to create that support system for you, whether you're a single mom or not. The fact that you're a mother, it's important for you to be able to create that. And for, I mean, actually, not. Just, I mean, I'm saying in life, it's okay to ask for help when you need and to have that support system. Uh, so that you can continue to be successful, have a great personal life and manage and you know create that beautiful balance uh, to remain successful. With those valuable words of wisdom, I would really like to thank you so much Apurva for coming and speaking here. Thank you Rani, this was lovely. Thank you so much.